Well, good evening, my fellow Yarnies. This is Classy Kim coming to you on a Saturday evening. It's probably about 7.30 um, in uh, Eastern Time. And I'm just uh, doing the 20 question tag. I was tagged by uh, Victoria at Alaska Crafty Gal and Laurel from the Dabbling Hook and Kim Thompson from Pettis Kim, AKA Ebony Pearl uh, and the Crafty Nomad. So I'm gonna do my 20 tag. Before I get started, um, I wanted to uh, say to Parmalee, Sharon Parmalee, who gifted a uh, uh, project bag for my last uh, random act of kindness. Uh, I forgot to show the envelope. I had it sitting there or s show the card. Isn't that a beautiful card? Sharon, this is really nice and I read the contents in it and I appreciate it and everything. Again, thank you uh, again for um, your uh, random act of kindness and your sponsoring that random act of kindness. Okay, I'm going to get on with the uh, tag. Um, the first question was, what does your name mean? Uh, it's uh, from English. It's an English name uh, from Wood of the Royal Forest. Um, it can be for a boy or a girl. I've, I've seen, a, I've, I've heard of a couple guys named Kim. Uh, mostly uh, guys and girls names that I've heard of is Stacy. I've heard of that a lot, but anyway, we're talking about Kim now, but uh, that's uh, what it's derived from, and uh, my actual name is Kimberly, and that's what it, what it means. Uh, where are you from? Uh, my people are from Greenville, Tennessee, but I was born and raised in Akron, Ohio, which is about 30 minutes from Cleveland. Um, I'm in uh, the uh, Akron, Ohio, also... We have a lot of celebrities that came from Akron. Uh, some, you'll hear them say that, they're, that well, the media will say that they're from Cleveland, but they really wasn't. They was actually from Akron. Um, but uh, like one of them, of course, you know, that's LeBron James. And uh, we had some singers. Um, uh, man, I can't think of his name right now. But we have, we've had quite a few people from Akron, Ohio, uh, that are celebrities. But I'm not a celebrity, but, you know, I just uh, thought I'd mention that. Okay, number three. Where were you born? Um, I was born at Akron General Hospital. Uh, and number four. What would your parents have named you if you had been a boy? Um, well, I wish I could answer. I wish I could answer that question uh, for my parents. And what they might have named me if I was a boy, but they're both deceased, so I, we never had talked about that before. Um, but I'll tell you, you know, uh, if I had a, had a boy versus my daughter, my daughter's name is Valen, and um, which her name is, uh, I got her name from Time Magazine. Uh, I saw a man's name, his name was was Valen, but it was spelled V-A-L-A-N. And then I looked it up and I found that her name meant walking with grace. So that's why I named her. That's where I got her name from. But if she had been a boy, I would have named her Marquise because we've got a lot of Marcus in our family. My brother's name is Marcus. His son's name is Marcus. My brother-in-law name was Mark. His son's name was Mark. Uh, you know, little Mark. And then, so if I had had a, a boy, I would have named him Marquise. So I would have kept that, that line going. Um, let's see here. And uh, so I found that Marquise meant, it was a French name. It means ruler of uh, the borderline, borderlands of the realm. So, and which is befitting for me because I, I like movies that are in the 1800s. I, I really do like those type of movies. Um, let's see. What is your biggest accomplishment? Well, 
you know, of course, of having a, uh, my daughter and raising her because I wasn't going to have any children at all. I had our, I said it from the time I was a little girl, you know, to being grown. And I got to be 28 years old and I said, well, if I'm going to do it, I better do it now because by the time I'm 30, I'm not going to do it. So I did. I, I you know, I, I was married, of course, and we uh, decided we both went and had got tested and everything before we had her. And uh, we did the whole rigmarole. And so she was a planned baby. And um, and so, you know, that was my biggest accomplishment. But, you know, that's that's a like a given. Your children are a given. So I would have to say my biggest accomplishment is being baptized a Jehovah's Witness. So it's been three years for me. That's my biggest accomplishment. Uh, number six, what is your eye color? It's uh, medium to dark brown, depending on the light, how the light hits it. Um, let's see, what is your favorite candle, candle scent? I like linen. Um, I even put a Snuggles fabric softener in all my vents so that when the heat hits it, then it'll blow off the heat. You know, you just stick a fabric softener, just stick it right in, you know, in between the, the vent and uh, tie it off so that it doesn't fall down in there or blow away. And then when the heat hits it or the air, when the air conditioner's on, it'll blow it and it just smells really good. And, and when I change it, I what I do is... I don't put a new one on there. I'll dip it in the fabric softener. I'll put the fabric softener in a cup, you know, in the in the cup, the lid, the top that it comes in, and then I'll dip each one of them down in that lid, and then uh, put it back on the on the uh, register, so, you know, to give off that scent, and it just smells so good in here all the time. People walk in, and they're like. Did you just wash clothes? And no, nope. <laughs> I, I didn't. But that's my favorite is linen. Um, let's see. I do uh, like um, cinnamon, apple, cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon smells. And I like pine. Um, you know, I remember when we were growing up, my grandparents' house, everybody lived at my grandparents' house. And she, had, she had a huge home. It was just absolutely huge. And um, I'm talking like almost nine bedrooms in it. So that's how big it was. And uh, we, had, um, we had pine trees lying down the driveway. And our house sat way in the back. And the pine trees lying down the driveway, it had to be 10 to 12 of them on each side of the driveway going down. So I remember just smelling that all the time, and uh, you know that that brings back so much memories when I get to smell pine. So you know, not not like pine saw. I don't not not that kind, but like the kind of the sense of uh, pine. I like that. Okay, uh, number. Let's see, eight. Can you cook? Well, I can throw down. Okay, as a matter of fact, I can throw down. I've uh, cooked, um, ooh, ever since I was probably seven or eight years old. Uh, I learned from my grandmother and my aunt. My mother, she was a cook, but she just didn't season it as well as my grandmother and my aunt uh, Clarice. She, me and my aunt Clarice, I really learned a lot from her uh, how to season food and things like that. and. Boy, putting butter in food. Oh, my goodness. It makes it taste so much better. <laughs> so, and not margarine. Nothing like that. Not shortening or anything. It's got to be butter. Okay? So, uh, but anyway, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a good cook, I have to say. Um, and uh, a lot of people seem to think so. They always would tell me I should open up a restaurant. And uh, my grandmother, she owned restaurants. She had a, a couple restaurants when we were growing up, uh, along with some corner stores she had. Um, but, yeah, she was known for her restaurants. People would go in there, and, you know, she fed a lot of homeless people, too. Um, she didn't, you know, get rid of any food that was left over. She, she gave it to the homeless or 
even if the food wasn't left over, I mean, I used to remember seeing a lot of homeless people sitting. Uh, you, you could tell that they were homeless by the way they looked. I'll put it that way because I was little. But I could, I remember sitting, her, uh, sitting them down and giving them some something to eat. I remember that, you know, and uh, uh, that's something I'll never forget. And it carried on, you know, I'm the same way. Um, okay, and uh, so number nine, what is good about your life right now? Well, um, even with my illness, um, I love my life. I love my family and my friends. And um, knowing that God is the head of my household, that is uh, what I really love about my life right now. Okay? So, um, I have something to look forward to. Uh, regardless of what I'm going through right now, uh, hey, I have a future to look forward to. So, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay, so we are on number 10. It asks, what is your sign? Um, I never did get into astrology, and though I am a, a Jehovah's Witness, we don't believe in, in astrology or anything like that. I never did anyway. So that part, you know, I just never thought, I always thought that, you know, it was something not spiritual with that. So I, I just never got into it. But... Um, you know, I don't knock anybody that does, so, you know, you do what you do. Um, but my birthday, I'm a, a born June 29th in 1963, so I'm uh, 56 years old. I can't remember, I can't believe that I'm 56 years old, though. It's just, time is just flying by. I remember when I was 40. I remember when I was 30. I remember when I was 20, you know, my teens. And I remember when I was little. And I don't know if you all are like this or not but I remember when I was two and three years old I remember that I remember and if I'm mistaken I remember when I was one so um you know I would just everything's just so vivid you know but uh being 50 uh you know hey it is what it is okay <laughs> I'm 56 and if I wasn't if I wasn't ill the way that I I am I mean like I played volleyball till I was 44 years old 44, 45 years old, I played volleyball. And uh, um, I did play softball. You know, I played in a, in a, in a league, which they taught me how to play uh, softball because I, I didn't play softball when I was little. But uh, we, we played kickball and things like that. And they did play softball in my neighborhood, but they didn't let the girls play. But um, I did play on the league when I got grown, and it was like a 40 and over league, even though I was younger. I was like in my, you know, late 20s when I played, but um, I did enjoy it. I learned a lot from the ladies that taught me um, how to play. So anyway, um, we were talking about signs, and I got into me being 56, and, you know, uh, okay, so I'll go move along. Number 11, uh, what scares me about aging? Uh, the biggest thing is the notion that if uh, something happened that I was paralyzed and uh, I only had my mind, you know, and, and I'm, I'm thinking and, and I can't speak, um, like... Uh, I think that would be the worst thing for me. Um, you know, I know a lot of people have challenges that they go through and, you know, but they have functions, you know, like maybe they can move their arm, one of their arms, or they can move their leg or they can move. But if I was just straight out paralyzed and just couldn't move anything, just my eyes or not even, maybe not even my eyes, just, you know, could think or something like that man that would devastate me you know that would um i still wouldn't want to commit suicide or anything because i feel that when my time comes the lord you know he'll he'll say it's time you know so uh you know being miserable and everything i i just but i i know that that would be the worst thing for me you know with aging um just to lose my mind or whatever because you know, it's even different to be, to have Alzheimer 
you know, you don't remember people. It's worse on the people, on your loved ones having an Alzheimer than the actual having the, the person having the Alzheimer. Because uh, your loved ones are looking at, you know, you that person is looking at you and not knowing who you are. And it just, you know, hurts you real bad. Uh, things like that. But, you know, even still, that person is still functional. Um, and, uh, but to, to be, like I said, to be paralyzed and just can't move, that, that's my biggest, biggest thing. Uh, okay, so let me move on. Um, let's see, what is your favorite holiday? Well, I don't celebrate holidays. Um, I stopped really when my daughter was seven years old. I wasn't a Jehovah's Witness then. I just didn't, you know, I stopped it because I just felt that it was all, all of it was just so commercialized. And uh, I just, I think people, you know, they grow poor, they go broke trying to uh, outdo, you know, and trying to please the your children uh, on things that they should be earning, I think. Uh, you know, certainly, you know, they, 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 you can give your children you know items and things like that but when they start expecting it I, I just no you know and not that my daughter did that I just saw it in other people and their children and and then I saw people that couldn't give to their children and it just broke my heart to see you know everybody's running around having festivities and then you have all these people that can't buy anything for their children and their children are feeling bad but then I look at it like we got to raise our children that this is not your birthday you know this is you know what it's made for that what it was supposed to be for um, that's what I how I felt about it back then and so with me being a Jehovah's Witness it didn't bother me at all that we don't celebrate holidays at all but when I did um, Thanksgiving was my favorite holiday because it just brought everybody together um, as far as, you know, food brings everybody together. And I mean, people come from out of town, you know, just to, it's like having a family reunion, you know, almost, but it's with your immediate family and, and friends. And, you know, how we did it is we, you know, anybody that didn't have anywhere to go or, you know, they all came to our house. That's just the way it was. And I carried on that tradition, even with me, uh, you know, Christmas holidays or, the, you know, the, the New Year's or whatever holidays it was and somebody didn't have anywhere to go, they could come to my house and I would have, a, you know, a, abundance of food, you know, that's just the way I used to do it. But um, yeah, I would have to say Thanksgiving was my favorite because it just brought people together and it wasn't about, you know, and we even at Thanksgiving, since everybody was together, we drew names on who we were going to give a gift to. Uh, so that way we kept it like the children would draw a name for a child and then the grown-ups would draw a name for the grown-ups and that would be who you bought a Christmas gift for. And then we would all get together on Christmas and we would um, uh, have breakfast instead of dinner. So everybody ate dinner at their own prospective homes but then in the morning, we all had breakfast together, and then that's when we did the uh, gift exchange. So that's how we used to do it. Uh, but yeah, but still, I have to say Thanksgiving. So, okay, I'll move along. Okay, my, what is your guilty pleasure? Well, eating a pint of double chocolate ice cream. Okay, not a, not Eating half of the pint, eating a whole pint is my guilty pleasure. I'm telling you, I love that so much. And the kind I like is, what is that? It's like not Ben and Jerry's, but, oh, my, oh, haagen -Dazs. That's my favorite. haagen is my favorite, okay? Um, let's see. So that's that. Uh, okay, what is your favorite show to binge watch? Well, I have so many. Um, so if I had to pick one right now during this time, it would be 911. 
it's about a, a fire station and they have police involved in it too and then they go into the Gray's Anatomy, you know, those people at the at, at, at Chastain Hospital, you know, so you got three different shows in the one in 911. So that's why I really like 911. So, um, and this is so diversity. Um, I love to see a diversity uh, in a show. Um, so yeah, that's that have to be my favorite to, to binge watch. Uh, but when I do uh, watch a show, uh, say if a show is on weekly or something like that, a lot of times I'll just wait till the whole season is over so that I can binge watch it. That way I'm not waiting on it to come or I'm not so suspenseful waiting till next week. Okay, what's going to happen? No, I'm just going to wait and watch it. Even if I'm behind, you know, I know, you know, some people talk, you know, they talk about what they watch or didn't know. Mm -mm. No, uh, no spoiler alert for me. It doesn't matter because I'm still not going to. I'll just wait till it's all over. But 911 is one that I will watch weekly. But the rest of them, yeah, I just watch. Oh, and Grey's Anatomy. I do watch that weekly too. But uh, the other ones I just binge while I wait till, they're, till the season is over. Um, sometimes I wait to I waited for two seasons so that I can you know watch two seasons at one time. That's how I like to binge watch. Okay, so number fifteen. What is the one thing you can't leave the house without, besides the car keys and your, uh, you know your cell phone. You know that's just an automatic for us and house key. All that's just automatic for us. I can't leave without my ice water. Okay, I have a a steel uh, thermos, and um, I I I put my cold water in it with my ice and everything. And oh my goodness, I have it in the car. It, it can slide off the off the seat. It can do anything. It's not gonna leak anything like that i had uh, this thermos i have to show you guys one day <laughs> but that's my favorite for a thermos because it doesn't spill uh, any i mean nothing okay so yeah so that's i can't leave home without my water okay my ice water at that um even in the winter time you know it's got ice water <laughs> all right uh let's see here number 16 are you a morning person or a night owl? Well, when I was working, I was a morning person all the way. I mean, there's no way that you could get me to be a night owl. You know, I mean, I stayed up late. Don't get me wrong. But when I did go to bed, oh, I mean, I, I slept through, you know, through until it's time for me to get up. But you believe me, I'm up at six o'clock every morning, if not five. I just, no matter what time I went to bed, when I was working, I got up at five or six o'clock. It just, that's just clockwork for me. So I used to be <laughs> a, a, a morning person and I loved it. And I, I never could understand how people could let the day go past them. I just couldn't understand that. But now that I've been off work almost three years, uh, I'm telling you, and I miss working so bad. I really do. I miss it, uh, the interaction and everything. But I'm a night owl now. You know, I'm I'm up all night. I mean, I don't. I probably don't go to sleep till like six in the morning sometime. And I'll sleep until one or two o'clock when I do go to sleep. So then I get up and start my day. You know, just like, and it's really no different for me. It's just. You know, I just feel like the night is so calm and I live on a street. It shouldn't be a busy area where I live, but the thorough way, it makes it busy. So, I mean, it's just cars, sirens, you know, paramedics, the fire trucks come down my street constantly all day long. So at nighttime, it's a lot calmer. So I think that's why... I turned to turned into being a night owl. I really like night owl, and the phone's not ringing, not none of that. It's just like, you know, not that I don't like talking at night or anything. It's just, 
you know, I, I know that the phone's not going to ring. And when I mean phone ringing, not people calling me to talk to me, we're talking about solicitors, okay? And I know there's a phone number you can call to get them to stop calling you. on. It's called a do not call list. You can look that up. And for those that don't know, you look that up on online and call that number and they can you put yourself your your home phone and your cell phone um on a do not call list and they will not call but after that year is up you have to do it once a year and then you know how it is when it's voting time that i mean the phone's ringing off the hook blah 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 so um you know that that's that's I don't have to worry about that at nighttime, you know. Um, I just like the quietness at night, so so now I'm a night owl and I love it. And even if I have the doctor's appointments or whatever, I still make them early, you know. I go uh, early, it doesn't matter, but I, I usually don't even wake up till like one o'clock, one o'clock no later than two, <laughs> and it's just fine with me because it's just me, you know, my daughter, you know, I she. Hey, I don't, it's really nothing that I need to do, you know, like, I don't have a husband, I have to cook, get up and, and he and I, or he, he cook or I cook or whatever, it's not, I don't, we don't, I don't have it like that, so, I can be a night owl. All right. What is your favorite genre of movies? Well, I'm a comedy drama, okay? Um... Uh, I like real life events. Um, I do like fictional. Uh, let's see. I hate to say this, but and it, but it's true. And it was out a little while ago. But uh, if you guys have not watched that that show called Shameless, um, what's his name? Will, William H Macy. Oh my gosh, uh, the Gallagher's. <laughs> he was Frank Gallagher. Man, his character on Shameless, I'm telling you, I, I, I laughed so hard on that series. It, it, that is the most funny, that's the funniest movie. That I, it's a drama, comedy drama to me. That that really, that's that's what you call a comedy drama. And the things that they do, uh, you know, I don't, I have to turn my head away from it, but I'm telling you, they'll have you cracking up laughing. That is such a funny show. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so that was uh, my favorite. That's my favorite genre of movies. It's a comedy drama. Okay. Um, what is the number 18? What is the last thing you bought? Well, I bought... I ordered uh, leather tags from Amazon and they haven't arrived yet, but I bought them. So I paid for them and, you know, so they'll be here whenever they get here. Um, 19. Uh, are you an introvert or an extrovert? Well, I would say I'm both. Okay. Um, an introvert because I don't really like crowds. Okay. Uh, and I really don't like them now that I'm in my 50s. I, I just, I don't like a lot. I can deal with a lot of people as long as I know them all. But people that I don't know, I don't like to be in the crowd. So, like, the, for me to go to a, a football game and be up in the stands and things like that, mm -mm, nope, that's not me. Um, I don't, and then when it's time to leave, you know, people make me dizzy. Uh all the talking and the, you know it makes it I have vertigo and I, I think it, I, that has a lot to do with it too and uh, but uh, extrovert wise I'm, I'm very outgoing you know um, I've always been like a life of the party uh, uh, I was an entertainer I love people to come to my home you know they didn't have to bring a thing not even not even nothing I mean I'd have all the food, the booze, you name it, I had it at my home, and you didn't have to bring a thing, okay? Um, I like to entertain. I like to see people happy. I like to see people eating good and drinking good and, 
you know, and uh, we used to have it so bad, so good rather. When I say bad, I mean good. We had it so, so it was so such a good time that, you know, a lot of people would stay in my house. They would just stay over because I wouldn't want them to drive uh, home, you know, and it's because uh, I just wanted everybody to have fun and I have to worry about, you know, driving. So anyway, or uh, we had somebody that, you know, could take them home, that kind of thing. So that's what I always love to do is entertain. So even now that I'm ill, you know, I miss doing that, but uh, still crowds just, uh, it gets me now. Um, I do get to uh, have uh, Bible studies here. I have Bible studies here twice a month here. Uh, uh, and I'll do a, one of them, uh, a session I do over the phone once a week. So uh, I do do that. And I, I also, because of my illness, and me being having lupus, my immune system is very low. And it's, every time I get around people, it doesn't fail. I get sick, okay? Um, and I'm talking about a crowd of people. It's, you know, people, they can't help it. They cough in there. It's just the way it, it is what it is. So uh, even uh, my meetings uh, for uh, Jehovah's Witness, you know, I have to, I, I, I do the over the phone because I can't afford to get sick. And that's usually what happens. I get sick every time. Um, so, yeah, that's that. So, uh um, so yeah, I'm both. I'm both. I really, I am. And I, I didn't really, I wasn't, wasn't really an introvert in my early 20s, 30s, 40s. I was an introvert, introvert, but now I am. So, okay. Uh, number 20. What is your favorite book? Well, without saying it's the, um, the Bible. Hands down. You know, I love the stories in it, I love uh, knowing that everyone was inspired to write the words that uh, are from our Creator. And that's what's so exciting to me. Um, and it seems like, you know, reading through the chapters and being a Jehovah's Witness, we go through each chapter every year we're going through from Genesis all the way to Revelations and we'll do it throughout the year and we'll we'll take every segment so we've gone we, we go through that through the Bible uh, uh, with a fine tooth comb you know um, we really get down to what the the uh, what the meaning is and uh, so that's I have to say that's my favorite book, but we're going to go outside of, of that and I'm going to tell you what my favorite fictional book is. Um, and that, that is A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by um, uh, Betty Smith. It was uh, in 1943. That's when that was uh, when it came out. They also made a movie uh, about it. If you ever get a chance to read that book. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a family. They were called the Nolans, and um, about a, a, it's an Irish family, and uh, a young girl. Uh, you know, she had. Uh, they were very poor, but she had great aspirations, and um, they lived in Williamsburg, uh, Brooklyn, New York, and um, it talked about family, you know, other fam other people came in that was in the book. Betty Smith actually showed what their lives were about and how this young girl saw them through her eyes. And a lot of it was funny, too. You know, some of the stuff that uh, she would think um, about how people were living. Uh, let's see. Like, for instance, you know how how a lot of other cultures lived um she would look you know look at that and say well how do they know which one who, how do you know 
who's the prophet? You know, what culture has the prophet? You know, things like that. So she was very intuitive in what she was thinking and, and how, you know, she thought about uh, what other cultures thought ab about certain things. So you could pick that out, and Betty Smith, uh, the writer, she really brought that out. Uh, uh, and and her her father uh, was an alcoholic, you know, and and her mother, they loved each other very much. Her parents loved each other, and her mother just refused to, you know, let that alcoholic go because she loved him so much, you know. And they, you know, you got to see that through a child's eye and and eye and, and how what she thought about it and what she saw, and um, but she saw that her parents did love each other. Um, and like I said, it tells a history of the many characters in that book uh, and the movie as well. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a great book for all ages. Uh, one of my teachers I, I used to always be in book clubs when I was in school uh, and one of the teachers told me to read that book and and I did look back and once I read that book I read it again and and matter of fact I think I'm gonna purchase that book I have it on Amazon I'm gonna purchase that book and read it again and, and watch the movie again so yeah that's my favorite book okay uh, it's about 493 pages to read through. Um, the characters, uh, Johnny Nolan, Mary Frances, uh, Francie, Sissy, Romilly, uh, Cornelius, Neely, Nolan, and Katie. Those were some of the characters in the book. So, um, those are my 20 uh, questions. And I would, like I said, I was tagged by uh, Victoria, Alaska Crafty Gal, Laurel at the Dabbling Hook, and Pettis, at Kim Thomas at Pettis Kim, um, Crafty Nomad, a.k.a. Ebony, Ebony um, Pearl uh, on Etsy. Let's see. So I'm going to tag. I'm going to tag, if she hasn't already, um, Crystal from Bag of Day. Uh, Krista from Secret Yarnery, Alicia at Little John's Yarn, and Camille at Dolly Face Knits. Those are the people that I'm going to tag. I'm going to also tag all of my uh, Facebook group on Classy Kim's Crochet Facebook group. I tag all of you uh, and I will post the questions on the uh, Facebook group along with the in down below in the description box and um, I'm going to have a giveaway for those that answer the questions uh, those people on that that do answer the questions on uh, those 20 question ta tags uh, I know some of them have their own YouTube channel and I'll check and see if they've well no you have to tag you have to uh, or or just those that that have a channel and they've done the tag already just put in the comments that you have already done the tag that way you're included in the uh, the the random picker that I'll be drawing from okay so, um, yeah, we'll do the 20 tags there. Oh, and I like to tag uh, Penny at Penny Ann's uh, Creations. If you would like to uh, join in on the tag as well, I'd like to tag you in on the, the 20 questions. Um, so, yeah, so for the Facebook group, uh, we will do a giveaway over there for your tags. And we'll give it a week and uh, see how it goes, all right? So I'm gonna sign out for now and uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for uh, joining, uh, coming back and joining and watching my videos. I really appreciate it. Um, I think I'm at 900 and some odd, let's see, where am I at? I have 900 and 
39 subscribers. Or no, no, 739 subscribers. So um, if I could, I'd like to get to 1,000 too. That would be nice, you know. Uh, slow but sure and it's all it's all good you know it, it, it'll happen eventually so um, other than that we will um, peace out my fellow yarnies and I love you all have a good rest of the weekend